Okay, looks like everyone's on board, so we'll go ahead and get started here. So thank you again for joining our presentation today. Uh, again, my name is Samir Mihrali. I'm one of the sales engineers for Zoho uh, in our Austin, Texas office, and I will go ahead and be your host for this webinar. Before we begin the presentation, there's a few things that I'd like to go ahead and highlight. If you do have any questions while we're explaining every, anything throughout this presentation, feel free to type them into the comment box that you see in your GoToWebinar page. I have a couple of support colleagues here with me to answer some of those questions as we move along into the webinar. So we'll definitely take some time uh, to answer those questions as we're explaining some things, and we'll have some question time uh, towards the end, the end of the webinar to go over any other details as well. <clears throat> Just in case, uh, they might be busy, busy answering questions, so they might not get to you uh, immediately, but we will get back to you for sure, either by the end of the webinar or we'll reply with an email answering your questions. We'll also be recording this webinar as well, so <clears throat> once we go ahead and finish the webinar, we'll um, record it, download it, and send it in an email to each and every one that signed up for the webinar, so you'll have it on file as well. And finally, within the demo, um, we'll not only go over some of the slides and some of the presentation points inside this uh, webinar, but also dive into the CRM product as well. And you might come across some features that you like or you know might be useful to your business or how you use and operate the CRM, uh, but it might not be available in the edition that you're using. So in case you are interested in some of those features or want to know how they work, uh, feel free to reach out to us. We'll be more than happy to enable a trial for you for that specific feature or that addition that you need and then you know maybe you can try it out and then see if it's worthwhile to use in the future. So definitely reach out to us after that webinar and we'll uh, we'll get that squared away for you. All right so let's go ahead and jump in here. So before we actually get into the chunk of what we want to talk about in the webinar, uh, there is something that we want to talk about real quick. We have actually something special going on for small businesses. We're running a contest called Small Businesses Sell Big with Zoho to show our gratitude to small businesses around the world uh, for the uh, uh, for Small Business Saturday. So if you are a small business, please enter this contest. You can win up to $20,000 by nominating your business and then you can ask your customers, friends and family, and others to go ahead and vote for your business um, on our website. The rules are simple. The business with the most votes actually wins. So the link to actually join this uh, contest is going to be zoho.com slash sell big. So you can use this link to go ahead and sign up for the contest and then get your friends and family, customers, and other uh, individuals to vote for your business on Zoho.com and the winner of that will be uh, the contest winner. <clears throat> we'll also send this link out uh, with the email with the recorded presentation um, so that you have that on file as well. Okay, so let's go ahead and start the presentation. Now for this presentation today there's going to be a few things that we'll cover in quite a bit detail. <clears throat> so the agenda for today's presentation would be why are uh, small and medium businesses important to the economy? So some facts and figures of why SMBs are, you know, the, the pivot point for, you know, most uh, economies around the world. We'll also talk about some of the business issues and pain points that, you know, a lot of different softwares and technologies can solve for your SMBs, including uh, CRMs. And then also what the functions of a CRM are and how it actually improves some of those business processes and supporting some of those things that you do on a day-to-day -day basis. So we'll start big with how these types of SMBs are important for the economy, go into some of the pain points of which technologies can solve, and how those CRM functions can actually support that as well. <clears throat> so let's talk about some of the economic importances. So most of the time, you know, only companies like IKEA or Apple, Walmart, Nike, and so and so on are on the news, and we tend to assume that this it is the large businesses that contribute a lot to the economy. As a matter of fact, in most countries, especially in the United States, 60% of the job creation is run by small businesses. And here's some facts to prove that. Over 50% of the companies that showed hiked growth has less than 10 employees. So a lot of what the growth factor is coming from in the U.S. economy specifically is for small businesses with less than 10 employees in revenue growth. 
in the last decade, 41.8% of employment change came from small businesses. So the most growth actually came from those small businesses as well. And the small businesses have actually added 8 million new jobs while the large companies and you know, some of the enterprises out there were a reason why 4 million people lost their jobs. So a huge hike in the amount of businesses uh, that were growing jobs in the SMB market versus large companies that were losing those types of positions. In the private sector alone, 99.8% of jobs are offered by small businesses in the United Kingdom, which really isn't a small number at all. This is one of the greatest factors and things that stand out when it comes to you know, smaller businesses and how they make an impact uh, on the entire economy. While this has been a trend for a long time, <clears throat> excuse me. While this has been a trend for a long time, it's been one of the greatest uh, things that has been impacting um, you know, economies and small to medium businesses for quite some time. And countries across the globe have been using um, this type of leeway to you know, make, their, uh, make the importance of small businesses even more worthwhile. Now, technology has become a big game changer for small businesses, not only to contribute to the economy as a segment, but for individual businesses to grow and compete with larger organizations. There are many technologies that would help a small business owner to stay organized, productive, and grow. And Zoho is hopefully in the mindset of some of those uh, technologies once you're evaluating them. Zoho in and of itself has over 30 different products, but today we'll be looking at the CRM in particular. So let's go ahead and jump into some of those pain points and figures of how a CRM in general can actually help in those business processes and impacting the economy in a certain way. So let's talk about this for a second. Today, CRM is not just a tool for large companies. It is also important for both small and medium businesses. As most of these businesses owners are the ones that wear multiple hats and have less than 10 employees who run the complete business, you know, the CRM is going to be one of those things that actually impacts how um, individuals are going to be utilizing their day-to-day -day when it comes not only to sales but also to support, um, invoicing, payment generation, a lot of other things, even in internal collaboration. And Zoho CRM has also always been a favorite for small businesses for its use and, um, you know, intuitiveness and, um, you know, user-friendliness. So, um, a lot of those things can be admired by, uh, by those things. So going over some of those pain points, uh, there's a lot of things that can be impacted which a CRM can solve. Organizing collected data, so you know, bringing everything that you have as far as communicating with your, um, with your customers or potential prospects, uh, not having them all over the place like stuck in emails or notes on your desk or you know, things on your calendar. Being able to track and measure follow-ups so, you know, reminding yourself to talk to the people uh, at certain points in time or even automating some of the processes as far as those follow-ups are concerned, uh, leaving things um, automated in the right ways. Multi-channel communication for uh, accepting all types of forms of communication across your customer base, whether it be emails, phone calls, uh, in-person meetings, or just meeting them for the first time. And limited features, since most of them are pretty expensive, We've been able to consolidate all of that and just keep it into one space uh, under the Zoho umbrella. So, and essentially, what is a CRM? Of course, all of you have been using a CRM and know that it is an acronym for Customer Relationship Management. Now, <clears throat> a CRM is not just about maintaining those customer relationships, but it's also about winning new customers and retaining them. You can manage all the data that you have about your customers and prospects so you can support the sales, marketing, and customer support teams a little bit better. With Zoho CRM, you can collaborate better, you can increase your productivity, even close more deals and grow. We constantly interact with our customers to understand what features they need. Small business in particular needs specific functionalities that are affordable in comparison to integrated solutions that big organizations seek and turn out to be expensive. So um, organizing this collected data, tracking and following up, automating these sales processes and so on are a lot of the ways that improve upon. So let's take a specific example or a specific need of how a CRM kind of plays into that. 
And the first and foremost thing is going to be lead generation. The first touch point for uh, CRM information and how data gets generated into the system is from your leads. So whenever you speak to someone for the first time, you might meet them at a trade show, you might have an advertisement uh, like a commercial or a website banner advertisement, a lot of different ways that you can actually pull in those leads from specific sources. Now there's a lot of ways that the Zoho CRM can actually incorporate those things. Uh, of course, we have ways of generating uh, leads just by entering them in manually one at a time or you know, even using your mobile app to punch in their information, but we have a lot of different ways, including using a web form. So basically, you can create a web form using Zoho CRM, place it onto your website without using a single line of code and just capture those leads that fill in their information on your website. They'd be listed as a new one inside your CRM automatically. You don't have to waste time manually entering data. You don't have to you know, get an email and then physically put that information in to your CRM account. It'll automatically capture those leads and put them into We even have a way of from a business card. So let's just say you meet someone for the first time. Maybe you're sitting next to them on a plane or you meet a bunch of people at a trade show and stack of business cards from just meeting now you would probably have to put those people in one at a time manually just by punching them into your phone or going back home and opening up your laptop and filling out each and every one of those but we've made it simple and a lot easier for this lead solution we've actually built a business card scanner which actually allows you to snap a picture of that business card it'll go ahead and program and collect all the information allow you to confirm it and just send it over to Zoho and it'll be lead just like how you can with the web form. So it's as easy as just entering and snapping in that picture and it'll automatic, automatically be added as a new lead inside the CRM. So <clears throat> let's, let's kind of talk about how that works on, on the CRM side is, itself. So I'm going to move over to my Zoho CRM page here. So quickly and easily, um, you know, as soon as CRM, this is going to be the first thing that you see and to actually access the web form information uh, and how to set it up, all you need to do is hit this wrench icon at the top right, hit setup over here, and then from setup you can go ahead and under the automation page go to web forms. Now under this automation and web form section under the setup menu, a new web form and start adding the different types of fields that you want to enter into the system. So, you know, you can basically drag and drop any one of the different pieces of information that you'd like for your leads to fill out. So, I can drag and drop, you know, the first name field, other things like their mobile number, or other details available as well. So, I can use this as a way to kind of collect all the different pieces of information and place them in there accordingly. Okay, and then once I select which forms or which field I can add some information about where that form is going to be located like the website or that landing page and then from there all I really need to do is copy and paste this little snippet of code to my website so it's really easy. All you have to do is just copy and paste this over. You can send it over to your um, website guy who handles building your website. If you just send over this code to him, you can go ahead and uh, add it to his or her website. And it's going to look something like this. So as soon as I post this onto my website, I'll have a little simple form look that looks just like this where I can go ahead and add some information. So if I put in someone real quick, I'll just put in John Doe at ABC company. <clears throat> I'll put J Doe at ABC. And if I just go ahead and fill out that information and submit it. And I go back to my leads here. John Doe is automatically listed as a new lead. So it doesn't take any time whatsoever. There's no delays on how that information can be transferred over. And as soon as someone fills out that form, they'll immediately be listed as a new lead inside the system. So you're really wasting no time by collecting that information and bringing it in just by automating and using the web form option.
Okay. So on to the next section. When we actually bring in those leads inside the system, you'll be able to access them from this list that you see right here. So when I click on the lead section in the system, I'm able to see a, a list of all the different leads that I have in my CRM, including the one that I just created for John Doe. So right now, I'm just taking a look at a list of all of my leads. I can kind of see information like their email address, their lead source, their status. I can use this information to kind of custom. So if I want to add in some other details, like maybe their phone number, for example, I can go ahead and punch that in as well and see that information on the right-hand side. On this information, too, if I just want to look at people that came from my website and apply that filter and just see the people that came to my website. And so once I do that, I can go ahead and click on any one of these, more information about them, and everything like that. So this is how I can sort of manage and collect that information on my leads and start interacting with them a little bit more. Now this is where I can start following up with them, keep in contact with how I'm going to uh, potential leads and as I continue to interact with them I can use these different sections that I have set up here to log the types of dealings that I have with them. So if I add a note for this person and say and learning more I can quickly add that information into into this lead as a note, add a title to the note, attach files from my computer, or even add other details. Mention other people. So I could say add Peter, who's you know one of my sales reps in my CRM. I can tell him to please follow up. So once I do that, Peter's going to receive a notification and an email that he's been mentioned in a note somewhere so he can take a look. So it makes things a little bit easier to collaborate with other people, uh, add quick notes about the leads that you have, and you kind of log their interactions. From here, look at some of the activities that you uh, leads, like reminding yourself to talk to them later by creating a task, scheduling an event with them, like a meeting or an appointment that you might have scheduled, or even logging a new call. So a lot of ways that you can sort of incorporate the different types of interactions that you have and sort of to following up with them. So that's sort of how you can generate those leads and sort of log the interactions that you have with them, which we'll talk about in a little bit more detail. Now once you actually collect that information from those leads, you start that follow-up process and you start qualifying them, then you know you have those different that are going to be actually expressing interest in your product or your service, right? So you can actually transfer them from a lead over to a contact. So it'll actually allow you to organize the collected information that you have and bring them over into the contact section. And within the contact section, you can basically get a 360 degree view of your contacts, monitor the interactions that you have with them, whether they be activities, potentials, or deals, or even emails in the system, which we'll also talk about. Contact management is a name or adding a phone number or you know a physical address or an email. You get to view the complete history of that particular contact and also gain insights from that conversation, even on social media. So Facebook, Twitter, or even you can monitor those customer interactions, internal notes, and so on, like we sort of discussed. And having records on notes and conversation within the contact means that when a sales rep walks out or you know might not be there for a particular day, the information doesn't walk out with that person. And anyone would be able to pick up that contact or that lead and be able to provide support just like they were able to with the previous person. So all of that with the different customer interactions and getting that 360 degree view, you'd be able to see how all of those are set up in the system. So let's try to figure out how it's going to look like with someone that you for. So I'm going to go to one of my one of my contacts here, one of my existing prospects. His name is Stefan Quaird. And as you can see here, I have a lot of questions that I've had with him so far. As you can see, I've collected a lot of information from him as far as his phone number, his contact information, his address, but on top of that, I've, I've added some notes for him. I have an open deal or a potential already set up with this person. I've had activities with them, even exchanged emails back and forth. So I can pretty much collect all these different pieces of information and even connect 
with their Twitter account if I wanted to as well and see, you know, any tweets that they might have, any Facebook wall posts that they had or anything like that. I could even see sometimes where they've visited my website uh, using one of our other products, Zoho Sales IQ, or even email campaigns that I've had with them. So if I've ever sent them an email blog or, um, you know, they attended one of my marketing events, I'd be able to see them uh, and sort of see how much interest that they've expressed with me. I can use this different contact page to take a look at how the interactions have been with this person on a historical format by these different interactions. So whether they be calls, scheduled meetings or appointments, emails that I've had with them with other individuals, questions, website visits, they're all going to be collected under the contact page where I could see that information. You can even see this info on a more historical or timeline format. So under this timeline view, a historical interaction of you know everything that's ever been updated with this person, whether you know certain pieces of data have been updated, emails have been received, tasks have been added, everything like that can be sort of monitored by this uh, timeline view so I can see you know what's what's been then how much interaction have I had with them and what is the next step and what's something that I need to do soon about this person. So using the contact management system that we have inside the CRM, you can pretty much get the necessary information and bring it in accordingly. Now what's coming up next? Now on top of all the different contacts that you're going to be talking to, all the leads that are going to be generated inside the system, start adding activities for each and every one of them, right? Whether they be, you know, adding a leader or setting up a meeting or an appointment or scheduling a call with them, all these different things are going to start accumulating as you um, use the CRM a lot more and use it as a way to kind of figure out what you have going on next or what, what's, uh, what do you have to deal with. So all those things are going to be built in and sort of added in together. And it can get pretty with the amount of things that you have to do on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, whether you have things set up on your Outlook email that reminds you to uh, set a meeting or appointment, or you use the CRM to take a look at your scheduled calls. The great thing about that is, is that all of that can be combined into one place using the activity section inside Zoho. So with the customer base increasing every single day and adding new customers inside the system, it's impossible to remember each and every activity. So that needs to be done on a daily basis. With the ability to and tracking mechanisms, makes the data actionable. Most of the SMBs that require this type of interaction need automated reminders and follow-ups um, as most people in the company wear multiple hats. So whether it be you know, accounting related information, marketing, support, or even sales, all that needs to be collected and sort of organized into one place. And so scheduling those reminders and follow-ups will help the sales team efficiently and it saves a lot more time uh, from faulty memories or even outdated reminders. When a customer requests something from you using the CRM, you can automatically assign those tasks or uh, things to respective individuals by leaving specifics, bringing on uh, the customer or anyone who's actually having a touch point with that person will know exactly what's going on all the time. And this way, one doesn't miss you know, much deadlines or you know, they're going to be able to be the point man running for calls or meetings with that specific individual. The same thing happens with the calendar that we have inside the Sierra. As you can see on the right hand side for this slide, uh, using the calendar inside the CRM, you actually be able to see what other people have scheduled uh, on an incoming basis. So whether they be scheduled meetings or appointments, um, any calls that they have scheduled with individuals, you can kind of see on a collaborative basis which users have things going on. And so you can use that to use as a reference whenever you're scheduling things for other people or other people in your company, then you can kind of track and see what they have going on using the calendar that we have in the system. And what's great about using Zoho C the main calendar is that it syncs with pretty much every calendar that you might be using, including Apple or iCal, Microsoft Outlook, or even Google Calendar.
we integrated with all these different calendars to actually add that contextual information into one. So even if people are using multiple different ones, you can actually calculate and um, bring in that in information all into one place using the Zoho CRM calendar. Okay. So let's talk about that real quick. It's like how we were able to see how leads are organized or contacts or accounts. All those are going to be sort of organized in sort of a list format, which you're able to see under the activity section. So you can see whether they be tasks, calls, or events that you have scheduled. You can see the due dates for those, um, set up reminders for those within each one. I can follow up that I have scheduled for the 28th. Um, I can see a lot of different things like when it when it was due, what the status of this um, task is, and then I can also set reminders for myself to get an email by you know a couple of days before. I can get an email or a pop-up inside the CRM. I can assign it to myself or other users inside the system. So a lot of different ways where I can actually um, signify some information and remind myself to do so. I can even prioritize some of those tasks um, on these customized bases. So this sort of allows me to kind of track and see what activities that I need to get done and go sort of go down the list and see which ones that I need to do, which ones haven't been completed just yet, and which ones I need to take care of, right? Now this sort of gives me an organized format of all the different activities that I have, but we also have this other enhanced view. This actually takes all the different activities that you have inside the system and splits them up into the different types of people that you have. So whether they be normal leads or contacts, people that you have open potentials or deals with, or even existing customers, you're actually able to see all those different types of activities based on the type of If it's someone that's just a lead versus someone that's already a customer, you might want to prioritize one over the other. So this sort of gives you a way to see and collect all the information that you have and use it as a way to track which one's important and which ones are most efficient as well. Now the same thing applies to the calendar. One of the icons that you see at the top right is going to be this calendar icon. So from here you can go to any one of the days that you have scheduled, anything uh, on a monthly or weekly view, and I could see what's going on for specific individuals. I could see information for just myself or all users that I have set up in the system, I can see what other people have going on, and I can use that as a way to kind of track and see how other people are doing or what they have scheduled. So that's how activities work, how you can schedule reminders and sort of set up the calendar option inside the system. And I would definitely recommend checking out this activities um, vertical view, uh, which is one of our more impressive features where you can organize the types of um, activities that you have based on the person that you're using. Okay. All right. Now the next thing that we're going to be talking about is opportunity management. Now there's a couple of different terminologies that we've used in the past for opportunities. In the, in the past we used the term potentials. Potentials um, is what we use to sort of outline the details of the sale as far as you know what's the potential dollar amount, you know what stage they are in the process of making a decision. We've recently changed that name from potentials into deals. So um, we've actually used that terminology for our newer accounts. So if you're not familiar with the deal section, it looks pretty much the same and it, it's exactly the same as potentials inside Zoho CRM. Now a sales opportunity, a potential or a deal, all those different terminologies are pretty much interchangeable, is a contact or you know an account which has been qualified. You know, they've been created as a leads, they've been converted into contacts, and you know, they're now qualified at this point where they are actually talking about purchasing from you. Within the CRM, you can track your sales pipeline from identifying a hot prospect uh, versus someone that's lower in the pipeline to winning in the deal based on the different stages that we have set up inside Zoho CRM. So spot the people most likely to buy and spend more time communicating with them. So you know if they're closer or higher into the stages section, then you know those are the people that you need to focus on. So you can divide your sales cycle into these different stages and prioritize the prospects based on what stage that they're in and matter at every step. 
So, for example, you might have individuals that you've sent a proposal for or created a price quote. Those are people that you've already sort of collected information from. You know what they want, and you just need to give them a price point. So they already have some interest versus people that might just be shopping around. They don't know exactly what they want yet. You've only had maybe one call with them. They might be, you know, sort of in the qualification stage still or just needing more analysis. So you can sort of categorize which stage they are in the process based on, you know, all those different types of communications that they've had and things of that nature. So you can identify and pick these different stages to organize for that information. Um, you know, we have some pre-built stages set up inside Zoho CRM for um, the potentials, deals, and opportunities sections. Of course, those are completely customizable. So if there's stages that you might have noticed that don't really apply to your business process, that's totally fine. Actually, we recommend that, we, that you change those stages based on the process that you use in your CRM account and your, your, in your business. So based on that, you can actually customize those different stages to follow the process that you have, whether it be going from step A to step B and then finally closing or having multiple steps in between. You can sort of utilize that um, customization process to organize which stage each person is in the process. So let's talk about that real quick. So I'm going to go over to my deal section. I have a list of deals that I already have set up. A few of them are closed, some of them are not. Uh, so I can see a lot of them in my system here. I'm going to go ahead and add some more in so you can see a whole list of things that I have set up. So it, as I start working on some of these deals, I might go into one of these and you know access one. So I'll go into this consultation deal that I have set up. As you can see here, it's just a quick glance of the uh, deal information that I have set up here. Right now, it's pretty low in the process. Right now, it's 20% to close. It's a needs analysis. It's not too far in the process just yet. It's not anywhere near close to one or close to lost. So right now, I put a dollar amount for this deal of $15,000, just a generalized estimate of what I think this deal is going to be. And then I put the stage as needs analysis for the moment. Now, each stage inside the CRM is actually tailored to a specific probability amount. So uh, needs analysis equals 20%. And then that's going to be multiplied by the 15,000 that you see here to give me an expected or a weighted revenue of $3,000. So now whenever I change that stage from needs analysis to let's just say that I send them out a proposal, it's automatically going to change the probability and also this expected revenue. So from a reporting standpoint, you can kind of track and see how well all of your sales are doing based on the different stages that they're in, what the expected revenue is going to be for this particular quarter or month, or what's the average probability of all my deals, or you know how is one of my sales reps doing versus another one that has all these other deals set up in the pipeline. So I can use these different stages, these probabilities, and this revenue as sort of a way to calculate and sort of monitor where everything is in the process. And I'm going to use these different stages up until this deal is closed one or closed lost, which means that they actually became a customer or they decided to go with someone else. Now, anytime that stage is actually updated inside the system, then it'll actually uh, sent over into this stage history section where I can see the duration of time it takes to go from one stage to another. So as you can see, it was in the needs analysis stage for 69 days up until I sent it into the price quote section. So this sort of gives you a way to kind of track the amount of days it takes to go from one stage to another. Okay, And if that person is evaluating other vendors for the same service or product, you can add those as competitors inside the system just so you can associate it to the deal and have that information set up the right way. So you can use this as a way to kind of organize how these deals are running and how they're set up. Now again, when I go back to this deals page or potentials or opportunities, these are just a list of all the different deals that I have, right? Uh, I can pretty much organize it the same way that I could before. Maybe I just want to take a look at deals that are in the price quote stage so I can sort of apply a filter. So just like I could in leads or contacts, I can 
sort of set up this different filtering option for all these different types. But what's great is on top of a segmented list, I also have this pipeline view. This gives me all the different deals that I have in my pipeline split up into the different stages that they're in. So I can see I have a million and a half dollars in qualification, I have 52,000 in needs analysis, and as I move along the process I can see that I have some more in all these other stages. So it kind of gives me a way to see how much money that I have in my pipeline by the different stage that it's in. And of course, if I'm working on one of these deals and I know that it's going on to the next stage, I can go ahead and drag and drop it over. And it'll take those calculations and move them over accordingly. So I would definitely recommend checking this out as well. Now let's go ahead and jump into the next section here. So on top of what we've talked about so far, lead generation, contact management, managing your activities like tasks, calendar events, and calls, and even opportunity management, one of the other most important things in the system is communication. So on top of the calls that you have scheduled, activities, managing your records, multi-channel communication is going to be one of the most important things that provides success to any businesses. There are a lot of different channels and touch points that a customer can actually reach out to you and communicate with you and your company. So it's important to have the right tools uh, to monitor those communications. You can reach out to customers on various channels like email, social media, monitoring calls, or even in person. Of course, this is not an easy task to organize all of those communications in one place, but Zoho CRM actually ties down all those uh, with options on email integrations. We even have a dedicated social media tab a mobile app to log any calls or interactions that you have on the spot and keep you updated as you're on the move. So with that in mind, let's first take a look at emails. So the first and probably the, one of the more important things is uh, email inside the system. So first and foremost, email is your important mode of communication. It's probably the most important that any sales rep or anyone in sales would actually use. From where, from when you send all welcome and follow-up emails, get and reply to requests and support queries, you don't have to switch between screens to view your email or see emails inside the CRM. Email marketing takes that a step further. Email marketing is a powerful way and personal way to connect with your customers. It allows small and medium businesses to target the right audiences on a mass scale. So it provides social media uh, special tools to analyze and accurately measure responses to the email campaign using our own advanced email marketing integration with our other product called Zoho Campaigns. You can actually send mass email campaigns, schedule follow-up emails, and keep track of email open and click-through rates and bounce rates as well. You can move those new leads through the sales funnel using those drip campaigns and sort of automate the process of seeing exactly how um, those emails are set up. Now let's talk about that for a second. Whenever you create different email campaigns inside the system, you can get instantaneous response tracking. So whenever someone opens an email or clicks on it, you'd be able to get a statistical analysis of all that information on the right-hand side. So how many people opened the email, how many people clicked on it or did not open it, or how many people might have bounced. So it actually shortens the sales cycle a little bit so you can actually see and keep track of those um, customers that are actually engaging with your product or you know with the marketing that you have with your service as well. All right, so with that in mind, if I go into any one of my contacts real quick, let's just go back to the one that I was talking to before. Let's go back to uh, Stefan Query from Golden State Consulting. I can hit the Send Mail button here, which actually pops up a new tab in my browser where I can send a new email inside the system. So that actually allows me to create a new email, create a new subject, and fill out that email as, as I'm sending it the same way that I do in either Gmail, Outlook, or any of my other email systems. I could even choose a template that I already have set up inside 
uh, the CRM where I can embed some information. So maybe I want to pull the person's first name or other details. I can use an actual template inside Zoho CRM to pull that information and send it out. So I can draft up and create a new template really easily and efficiently and send out that email the way that I want. Now, anytime you send an email using Zoho CRM, it's going to say that it's coming from your own email address. It's not going to indicate that it's coming from Zoho. It's going to give uh, your own sender address whenever those emails are sent. So none of that information is going to be transferred over as far as indicating it comes from Zoho. So you can either use Zoho to send those emails, but we also have email integration, which means you can continue to use your existing email system the same way that you do right now, whether it be Gmail, Outlook, uh, Yahoo, any other email system that you might have. And basically, anytime you send an email or receive an email, Zoho can actually capture that information and put it into the corresponding person. So if I go back to this email section, I can see any interactions that I have with that person with my Gmail account under the section here in the system. The process to do so is pretty easy to connect. You'll go back to the setup menu at the top page. Under general, you're going to go to email settings. And then from here, I can go ahead and integrate with one of my email, uh, email interactions. So right now, I have it set up with Gmail. I can use pretty much any email um, server information inside the system, whether it be Outlook, Office 365, Yahoo, a bunch of other ones that we support. So you can basically and then pretty much be good to go from there. So I definitely recommend integrating your email to the system to have all of your emails synced to inside Zoho. Now on top of that, we also do have the email marketing side of things. Basically, you can select a, a bunch of uh, people all at the same time and hit the send mail button. That'll allow you to select a template that you already have set up. They'll all receive the same email um, using the email template section that we have here. So basically, anytime that happens, you'll be able to get the analytics back on those emails. You'll get them using the sales signals that we have at the top. So anytime any one of those emails are uh, sent, you can click on that email and, say that it, and see that it was opened. If it was bounced for any particular reason, you'd be able to see that as well. And you can sort of see the interaction that you have, whether they reply to an email, they open it, they don't click on it. You can get those signals by uh, using this notification system. Using Zoho Campaigns, which is a little bit more powerful, you can also get some of these analytics using Zoho Campaigns inside the system as well. So you can utilize those to kind of capture and see which pieces of information have been set up on the email section. And we'll talk about how Zoho Campaigns uh, sort of works in, in our detailed email as well. Okay, so that's how emails work inside the system. Now let's talk about social integration. So how do you stay updated with your brand social media engagement? Because customers can reach out to you through any one of these social media channels, whether it be Facebook, Twitter, or Google+, be it mentioning your brand on Twitter or commenting on a Facebook post, Staying updated and making real-time responses to customers via social media remains uh, a Herculean task. But with the social tab inside Zoho CRM, which integrates Facebook, it integrates Twitter and Google+, you can basically get instant notifications when leads and customers interact with you. Using those sales signals that we talked about recently, um, you can actually see whenever someone interacts with your page, they tweet at you, they write on your Facebook wall, whether it's adding new leads inside the CRM or converting a lead to a contact, you can do it right from the social tab. So basically, you'll have your own dedicated page, just like you might have seen for activities where you see customers, open deals, or potentials, or normal leads or contacts. You can sort of see all the different individuals that have already had those different things set up and uh, send them out the right way. So the first thing that we'll talk about in this short demo of the social media integration is how to set it up for the first time. So if I go to the social tab inside the system, uh, you'll be able to interact with and sort of set up your different pages by hitting this um, gear icon at the, at the left-hand side. So from here, you can go ahead and add your own Twitter, Facebook, and Google Plus accounts 
and just quickly adding them using uh, this add account button. That'll pop up your Twitter page where you can accept that Zoho can interact with it. And then from there, you'd start be able to start it to be able to get tweets uh, sort of logged into the system. So anyone that's a normal leader contact, people that you might not have had set up in the system that are unknown, or that you haven't had as a leader contact just yet, will be over on the right hand side. And then anyone that you do have a deal or an existing customer uh, will all be sort of transferred and associated in the right way. So you can sort of utilize that as a way to calculate which people are in which um, scenario. Okay. Now this dashboard <clears throat> is the place where you'll be able to see all the social posts from your contacts segregated into these four columns. And you can see how all those are going to be organized with each other. So as you can see, the different things that we have set up are pings and streams. So pings refer to posts in which your brand has been mentioned, so people that have actually interacted with you specifically. So you can see all that when they tweet at you. And then streams are going to be things that only apply to Twitter. It shows tweets from your CRM contacts in chronological order. So people that have actually posted tweets, you can see what they're up to, what they've been doing recently. So this sort of gives you a way to see all those in one place. Now you can start creating new posts as well. So if you want to compose a new tweet, you can hit this little draft icon and sort of compose a new tweet from the system as well. You could also apply different filters so you could see which specific tweets that you want to see or you know which types of options that you want. You can even drill down on a specific keyword that you want as well. So if you want to add a new keyword that you'd like to track like hashtag Zoho for example or anything like that, you could sort of set up those different keywords to see what's been going on in the space and you know what your individuals have been up to based on those keywords. And finally, you can see the activity stream. So anything that's been happening recently, you'd be able to see that inside the system. And if you want, you can always disable, add your own accounts and engage with them the right way by adding your own um, custom reports as well. Now lastly, we're going to be talking about the mobile app. So Zoho CRM mobile app is completely free of cost and available for both iOS and Android devices. When you're on the move, the app helps you plan your day. You can schedule and track your day-to-day -day activities. So the first thing that pops up in the page when you access the Zoho CRM page is what you have going on for that day. So whether you have scheduled meetings, calls that you have scheduled, or tasks that you have, you can see what you have going on for that particular day right when you access it on the home page. When you're done with a meeting, you can actually check in and geotag that you visited that one place. You can make a record of who you met up with, keep your colleagues informed about what's happening at that meeting. You can do a number of things like finding prospects nearby, like this map view that you see here. You can check sales reports and analyze trends using dashboards that you have in the system, collaborate with your team by adding notes and seeing feeds, locate customers around you and set up an appointment with them, and get instantly notified whenever people respond to emails inside the CRM. You can even reply to those emails within the app. So I would definitely recommend checking that out and monitoring and uh, downloading that mobile app so you can see how exactly it will improve your process on the go. Again, it's completely free. You can, take, uh, you can take your information on the go using that. It's available for both iOS and Android. And namely, one of the most important features about the Soho CRM app is the um, offline access. So even if you don't have internet access while uh, you're using the mobile app, let's just say you're on a plane or you might not have good service, you'd still be able to access the mobile app, add a new lead, and add some details, close a deal, check into a location. You could do all that without even having mobile app access or internet access on your mobile. And once you do, it'll go ahead and uh, add that information inside the CRM automatically. So the mobile app is going to be very worthwhile. You can work offline, you can locate your contacts from anywhere, and you can really increase your productivity. So I definitely recommend checking that out. 
Now we've pretty much uh, concluded most of the webinar and the features that we wanted to talk about and how, you know, from a small business perspective, all of these features that we have set up can really improve your process. So I wanted to take some time to show you some of the resources that we have set up. If you needed to get some more information about us or, you know, some of the features that you might have seen worthwhile, then I would definitely recommend sending an email to sales at zohocorp.com so you can contact one of our experts to have a discussion and see which features are the best fit for you. I would definitely reach out to our Zoho CRM team uh, by contacting us at 1-877-834-4428. And if you want some additional guidance and some detailed steps on how you can analyze and utilize some of those features that we talked about today, go to zoho.com slash CRM slash help and you'd be able to contact us and uh, be able to get a quick guide on how to use some of these features and even reach out to us if you need additional help. Now if you're looking to someone to help you out in the process as well, uh, we also do have a list of certified consultants that will be able to help you out in the process. So if you go to zoho.com slash CRM slash consultants, then I would definitely recommend checking them out and uh, getting some guided assistance as well. All right. for, so for some of you who might have missed the announcement in the start of the webinar, I would like to mention it again. We are running a contest called Small Businesses Sell Big with Zoho. To show our gratitude for the small businesses around the world for this Small Business Saturday that's coming up. So if you are a small business, please enter the contest. You can go to uh, zoho.com slash sell big and you can win up to $20,000 by nominating your business. You can ask your customers, friends, and family to vote for your business. The rules are simple. The business with the most votes wins. So we'll open it up for a QA. and a I want to thank you again for watching. And if you do have any questions, feel free to reach out to us on this question box. And we'll be more than happy to help. And um, the last thing that I want you to do is, if you do have any feedback, definitely tweet at us. So if you just go to add Zoho on Twitter, feel free to um, you know, get, leave us a feedback if you have any recommendations or um, if you have any, if you want to give us any praise or um, say how good of a job I did. By the way, my name is Samir, so definitely put my name on that tweet, please. <laughs> and if you want, you can mention the contest as well, sell big with Zoho, and that's hashtag small biz sell big. Hashtag small biz sell big. So we'll take some time to... Um, answer those questions that you have in the comment box. So if you do have any questions, feel free to reach out to us. And again, my name is Samir from Zoho CRM, uh, one of our sales engineers in Austin, Texas. And if you want to enter that contest, go to zoho.com slash sell big and hashtag sell big with Zoho.